everyone knows, good shooting has always been an American heritage. Wow! Trigger Joe scores again! I should be an aerial gunner. Gee, it must be fun to be an aerial gunner. And everyone knows that the B-29, with its remote-controlled turret system, is the dream of every gunner. This is the blister sighting station. That is the GE Redeflector gun sight. The electrical impulses it sends to the computer... Oh, the computer is under the floor, but it figures the deflections and offsets your guns automatically. Oh, the guns. They're in a turret under the fuselage. You can't even see them. Yes, Joe, you're a lucky man. Surrounded by the best equipment, flying at undreamed of altitudes, and because of the pressurized chamber, you don't even have to wear an oxygen mask. Why, with such a setup, you should make a great aerial gunner. I never should have enlisted. What do you mean? Why don't they just give me a gun? Because good shooting takes more than guns, Joe. Do you want a simple demonstration? Sure, I ain't busy. You see, it takes this equipment to solve the complex firing problems of modern aerial combat. Problems? Who's got problems? Well, in the old days, the only factor that affected shooting was bullet drop, for which the gunner learned to compensate. Later, when firing from a fixed base at a moving target, another problem was added. Forward speed of the target. The gunner now had to estimate lead or where the target would be by the time his bullet reached it. Whenever a gunner fired from a moving base, he had to consider the forward motion imparted to his bullet. In air combat, the gunner had to fire from a moving platform at a moving target. This required that he estimate range and allow the proper deflection for the target's forward speed and the forward speed imparted to the bullet. That's what I mean. Just give me a gun. Well, with the higher speeds of today, you have to make some very quick decisions. Where would you aim? How much lead? You see, Joe, all the gunners of history had a gun. But you, the modern gunner, have the remote control turret system. The answer to all your firing problems in the air. Yeah, okay, uh, but what's all this? That is a simple mock-up of the three basic elements of the system. Oh yeah, a sight, a footlocker, and the guns. Not a footlocker, Joe. That's the computer. What's that for? These guys could shoot without one. That's where you've got the jump on them, Joe. This guy had to figure bullet drop himself. This guy had to estimate lead. This guy had to allow for the forward motion of the bullet. But when the navigator sets in your altitude and airspeed, the computer makes the allowance. This joker had all the problems. And the computer solves all the problems. What am I supposed to do, sweep out the plane? No, Joe. Your job is to tell a computer where the target is and what it is doing. And to do that, you have to operate the site. Now let's take a simple breakdown of the site itself. Okay, let's. Basically, it consists of a reticle projected on a combining glass by an optical unit. In order to move this, it is mounted on an axle with hand wheels, which sits on a yoke, making a universal joint. The rest is simply electrical equipment which tells the computer what you're doing. And just what am I doing? You're framing the target. You pick him up in your sight and keep him framed in the reticle. Every movement of your sight sends certain impulses into the computer. 
which immediately gets the necessary answer. <laughs> Me too. And offsets your gun. Deflections, bullet drop, forward speed imparted to the rabbit. Hey, uh, this, uh, I was saying that this wheel is busted. No, that's your range wheel. By turning it, you control the size of the reticle. That's how you tell a computer where he is. How? It's quite simple. On the front of the sight is the target dimension knob. And above the reticle is a dial marked off in feet from 35 to 150. By setting this dial with the knob, you tell a computer the size of the target. And how do I know that? That's why you have courses in identification. Oh. Say this plane is a Zeke. Wingspan, 39 feet. After the wingspan dial is set, you turn the range wheel until the target is just framed in the circle of the dots, right to the edge of the wingtips. Now, the computer knows how far away he is. By framing the target accurately at all times... Hold it, Doc. Yes? Uh, didn't you say that if I keep this reticle on the target, the confuser would instantaneously offset the guns? Precisely. Then why diddle with these things? Because unless you set in the target's size and range, the computer won't give you the right deflection. Give me a for instance. Okay. Remember, your platform is moving at a high speed. Yeah, I'd better get fly and pay for this. Now here's your line of sight. Here's where your guns are pointing. If your range wheel is set for this distance, as long as you track the target, the computer will allow the proper deflection. If you track a faster one, the computer will allow a greater deflection automatically. Right. That's my point. Here's my point. Let's say it takes the bullet one second to reach a plane at this distance. Say another plane is closer to you, here, and flying at the same rate of speed. Since it will take your bullet only a half a second to reach him, the plane can only move to here. But as you see it, a plane farther away appears to move slower than a plane closer in, even though they are actually moving at the same speed. If you track the far guy, your guns will offset this much. And that's right. Right. But if you track the near guy, your guns will offset this much. Right. And that's wrong. Wrong? Why? because your lead must be decreased for the closer guy, since your bullets take less time to get there. So by framing the plane with the range wheel, you tell the computer where he is, and it automatically decreases the offset to obtain the right deflection. In short, you just identify him, set your target dimension dial, frame him accurately and smoothly, And you're sure to hit him. You're right, Doc. I never miss. Watch me. Wait. It's not that easy. Look down there. What's that? A typical enemy attack on a bomber, framed by an average gunner after an hour's practice with a sight. Oh, an average gunner. Watch me try one. Okay. Get down there and take that average gunner's place. Now, if you're flying along here, notice how the fighter appears to you. So, here's your sight. <laughs> the way they train gunners. <laughs> and here's your projected reticle. Let's see you frame him. Yeah, he's a dead duck. Ah, uh, just frame his uh, wingtips. Uh, just frame. Uh, oh, oh, another guy. Now I'll, I'll just. Uh, 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 this guy, I'll, I'll frame him here. Uh, uh, frame, frame him up here, uh, down, down here. Uh, oh, uh, um, frame uh, uh, that duck. Uh, oh, uh, I should have framed him. How about a slower one? As you wish. 
Here it is. Wingspan, 35 feet. 35 feet. He's a dead duck. This time up. Hey, what in the... Hurry up, Joe. He's coming in. Let's see now. He's coming here. Yeah, get on him. Oop, easy. Up there. Steady. Get over here. Yeah. Now, I'm on him. Hold it, Joe. Hold it. No, son of a... That's practically perfect. Not in terms of your bullets. By framing too small, you told the computer that the target was back here, moving this way. Look at what would happen to your bullets. Since the computer is predicting on an entirely false course, the guns would be offset to fire along here. So as long as your range wheel is set wrong, your bullets won't hit. Now, let's continue. Uh, I'm ready. Uh, here they come. Uh, but there it is. Smooth. Uh, I'm getting closer. Almost right. Closer. Uh, there. I got him. Hold it. You're getting closer, Joe. Getting? Brother, I had him. Give me another one. Full speed. Okay. From the beginning. Let him come. Uh, frankly, Joe, do you know what kind of a plane that is? Yeah, Zeke. No, Frank. Frank? Yep. Thanks. Wingspan, 37 feet. He's a dead duck, yeah. I'll just frame his wingtip here. Yeah. Oop, oop, he's coming up fast. Turn the wheel smooth. Oop, 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 oop. Down there, up a little range over here. Yeah, close, I'm getting it. Got him. Now shoot. Shoot! Where are the triggers on this thing? Oh, the triggers. They're mounted on the sight, here. You press them with your thumbs. Now he tells me. Such training methods. Yeah, hold it till I frame them like I had them. There, let it go. I got him, of course. No, you froze up when you fired. You've got to continue framing when you are triggering. It's a matter of learning to coordinate with your hands. Coordinate? What am I, an octopus? You can learn it. Remember when you first learned to drive a car? Do you remember trying to shift gears, throw in the clutch, and steer all at once? Before long, you were doing all this besides playing the radio, tooting the horn, working the spotlight, and making the motor backfire. Oh, yeah, and fight him all right. I did it all with one hand. And with a little practice, Joe, you'll master the sight, too. Then you can take your rightful place in a B-29 sighting station. I'll line this thing if it takes all night. So the B-29 gunner's ability does not involve a knowledge of ballistics or the mathematics of aerial deflection shooting. His skill is determined by his manual control of the GE red reflector gun sight. He learns to shoot with his hands. Hands? I learned that last winter.